In the name of Allah, the one, the conqueror. And may Allah send his prayers and blessings upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, the Imams and the Mahdi's. In the Holy Quran it says, Say, O Allah, Lord of all dominion, you give dominion to whom you will and take away dominion from whom you will, and you exalt whom you will and abase whom you will. In your hand is all good, surely you are all powerful. My name is Abdullah Hashim. And I am the riser of the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi sent to the entire world by Imam Ahmad al-Hassan alayhi salam, the successor and vicegerent of Imam Mahdi Muhammad ibn al-Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi mentioned me by name in the will which he left on the night before his passing in which he said to Ali alayhi salam, O Abu al-Hasan, gather for me a pen and paper. And he dictated his will until he came to a place where he said, O Ali, there will be 12 Imams after me, and after them there will be 12 Mahdis. You, O Ali, are the first of the 12 Imams. God has named you in his heavens, Ali al murtada the Prince of the Believers, the Grand Truthful, the Bright Differentiator between Truth and Falsehood, the Trusted, and the Mahdi. These names may not be truly attributed to other than you. O oh, Ali, you are my successor over my family, their living and deceased, and over my women. Whomever you affirm shall see me tomorrow and whomever you reject, I am innocent of her. I will not see her, and she will not see me on the day of resurrection. And you are the vicegerent upon my nation after me. If God receives you, hand it over to my son, Al-Hasan, the very beneficial. If God receives him, let him hand it over to my son, al Hussein, the martyr, the pure, the assassinated. Then if God receives him, let him hand it over to his son, the master of the worshippers, Ali. Then if God receives him, let him hand it over to his son, Muhammad al-Baqir. Then if God receives him, let him hand it over to his son, Ja'far al-Sadiq. Then if Allah receives him, let him hand it over to his son, Musa Qazim. Then if God receives him, let him hand it over to his son, Ali al-Rida. Then if God receives him, let him hand it over to his son, Muhammad, the trustworthy, the pious. Then if God receives him, let him hand it over to his son, Ali, the advisor. Then if God receives him, let him hand it over to his son, Al-Hasan, the virtuous. Then if God receives him, let him hand it over to his son, Muhammad, the preserver of the holy progeny of Muhammad sallallahu these are the 12 Imams. After him, there will be 12 Mahdis. So if God receives him, let him hand it over to his son, the first of the close ones. He has three names, one like mine and my father's, Abdullah, Ahmed, and the third name is Al-Mahdi. He is the first of the believers. I am Abdullah, and my father is Ahmed al-Hasan al-Yamani. I am Abdullah, mentioned in the will of Rasulullah. The Prophet Muhammad called this will a protection against misguidance, telling his companions and closest family members, if you hold on tight to it, you shall never go astray. Rasulullah promised that whoever holds on to his, to his will would never go astray because this will names the divinely appointed successors after him. 
Whoever accepts the will of Rasulullah is accepted by Allah, and whoever rejects the will of Rasulullah is rejected by Allah. I was sent to tell you that mankind has all gone astray because they abandoned the clearest and most important tenet of religion, and that is the rulership of Allah. Only God has the authority to appoint a leader over mankind. It is not for mankind to appoint for themselves a ruler nor a guide. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The Prophet told them, Allah has appointed Talut to be your king. They replied, How can he be our king when some of us are more deserving than him? Besides, he is not rich. The Prophet said, Allah has chosen him to rule over you and blessed him with knowledge and stature. Allah grants kingship to whom he pleases, and Allah has boundless knowledge. The Israelites wanted to pick their own leader and saw that their logic and their opinion and their choice and their scales for choosing a leader to be better than God's. But the rejection of God's choice of a leader is a rejection of God's rule and a rejection of God himself. In the beginning, God created Adam and said, I am appointing a caliph in the land. God chooses Adam to rule over earth and grants him knowledge and authority. The beasts of the earth, the angels of the heaven, and all human beings were to obey Adam. The mere questioning of this appointment by the angels when they said, Shall you make in it someone who corrupts in it and spills blood? is rejected by God. And he responds and says, I know what you do not. It was obligatory for all to follow Adam, but the people rejected Adam's successors. And Cain murders Abel. And the children of Adam are oppressed by the children of Cain, who build great cities and appoint themselves to rule the earth, and the first covenant is broken. God wiped out humanity for choosing rulers and leaders other than those appointed by him. And he only leaves on the face of the earth the leader whom he appointed, Noah, and his family. And God is happy, for justice and peace can only happen when a divinely appointed man rules. But yet human beings repeated the same mistake, and before long they rejected Noah's successors. And they began to choose and install their own leaders and kings. And they chose a man named Nimrod. But God didn't want Nimrod to rule the earth. He wanted his choice to rule. Abraham. And so the second covenant was broken. And a punishment was sent down upon the people, for they were guilty of sin. The sin they were guilty of was choosing and appointing and following leaders other than those leaders whom were appointed by God. And so God brought down a punishment upon them, and he confused their languages and made them into many nations that could not understand one another. And Abraham was chosen and made leader of his own nation, a nation which followed the leader chosen by God and not by the people. And a new covenant was established, an Abrahamic covenant. And the nation of Abraham followed him and were blessed. And they then followed his successor, Isaac, and they were blessed. And they then followed his successor, Jacob, and they were blessed. For God was pleased whenever the people would follow the leader appointed by him. But eventually, the Israelites went into Egypt and began to follow the Pharaohs and obey their laws. For this, they led themselves into enslavement, and the third covenant was broken. God, once again, chooses for them a leader of his own choice and sends them Moses, peace be upon him to say, abandon Pharaoh, this false king, whom was not appointed by God, but by the people, and follow me, 
for I was foretold and mentioned by name in the will of Abraham. And they followed him, and God was pleased, and a fourth covenant was established. Moses became leader of his people and ruler, just as Adam was before. He led the Israelites out of Egypt after they swore allegiance to him, and his successor, who was appointed also by God, Joshua, son of Nun. Joshua, son of Nun, leads them into the Promised Land, and so long as they followed the leader chosen by God, the Israelites were blessed and their sins were forgiven, for they were the only nation who had a king that was appointed by God. But eventually, Israel began to appoint their own leaders and kings, and they rejected the divinely appointed successors. And God was angry, and the fourth covenant was broken. And so God sent them their Messiah to guide them and bring them back to the supremacy of God. And Jesus, the son of Mary, came. And Jesus was rejected by many and accepted by few. And God was pleased with those who accepted him. And a new covenant was established with them, for they accepted the rulership of God. And the same story repeated itself once again. After some time, the people would forget, would reject the leaders appointed by God and appoint their own leaders. And thus the covenant was broken and Muhammad was sent. And Muhammad alayhi, became the ruler over the Arabs and their king, and they accepted and supported him, and a new covenant was established. And God was pleased, for when Adam ruled, it was God ruling. Adam had the Spirit of God blown into him. When Noah ruled, it was God ruling. When Abraham ruled, it was God ruling. When it was Moses ruling, it was God ruling. When it was Jesus ruling, it was God ruling. When Muhammad ruled, it was God ruling, for the Messenger rules on behalf of the appointing party. And yet, once the Prophet Muhammad died, the same thing happened, and people chose their own leaders and rulers and abandoned the successors of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi O people, I belong to the most noble household on the face of the earth, the household of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi Your prophet, we, his household, have been oppressed since he left this earth and until this very day. Rulership over his ummah has been usurped from us, and we have been imprisoned, poisoned, and killed. You had an oath taken upon you by our messenger to love his household, and yet you did as the Jews and the Christians did before you. The Prophet Muhammad said you would follow the footsteps of the Jews and the Christians step by step, so much so that if they were to follow into a lizard's hole, you would do the same, and you have. As the Jews murdered Zechariah in the temple, you murdered my grandfather, the prince of the believers, Ali ibn Abi Talib, salam, while he was in the holiest of positions, a state of sujood, while he was praying in the holiest of months, the month of Ramadan. As the Jews remained silent while their king beheaded John the Baptist, Salam, you remain silent as your false king, Yazid, son of Muawiyah, Lanatullah beheaded the grandson of Rasulullah and the master of the youth of paradise, al Hussein, son of Ali. As the Jews betrayed their own Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, and sought to murder him and crucify him, you too betrayed us and betrayed me your awaited riser, the lookalike of Jesus, and your Savior. But God will not allow you to murder me as he didn't allow it to happen to Jesus. And as such, with how you treated Rasulullah's family, starting with the murder of Fatima al-Zahra salam, and the poisoning of al-Hasan ibn Ali, and the beheading of al-Hussein ibn Ali, and the poisoning of Zain al-Abideen, Muhammad al-Baqir, Ja'far al-Sadiq, Musa al-Qazim, Ali al-Rida, Muhammad al-Jawad, Ali al-Hadi, al-Hassan al-Askari, 
and the attempted murder of Muhammad ibn Hassan al Askari and Imam Ahmad al Hassan. You have completely broken the Muhammadan covenant and betrayed your oath and have earned the wrath of Allah and His curse except for those who repent and pledge allegiance to Allah. Pledging allegiance to us is an allegiance to Allah. The hand of God is above our hand. And just as Adam, Safi Allah, was sent with a covenant, and Noah, Naji Allah, was sent with the second covenant, and Abraham, Khalil Allah, was sent with the third covenant, and just as Moses, Kalim Allah, was sent with the fourth covenant, and just as Jesus, Ruh Allah, was sent with the fifth covenant, and just as Muhammad, Habib Allah, was sent with the sixth covenant, I, Abdullah, was sent with the seventh and final covenant. You are all guilty of sin and do not believe in Jesus Christ, nor do you believe in Muhammad or any of the prophets and messengers. And due to that sin, you have broken the covenant with Allah and you are deserving of punishment and it hangs over your heads. That is because you chose your own leaders and kings, your own presidents and prime ministers, and you supported man-made laws and decrees while rejecting the divinely appointed rulers chosen by God and foretold by the prophets and the messengers. You did so while shamelessly claiming to be saved. The Jews killed and rejected the prophets and messengers and taught that salvation is attained through the observation of God's laws, His halal and His haram. What salvation do those who observe the, observe the Sabbath and eat what is kosher while killing and rejecting the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, expect to attain. The Christians, they abandon all the teachings of Jesus and turn the religion of Jesus into one which supports the false rulers of this world that were not appointed by God, but by Satan and the people. They rejected the successors of Jesus and appointed their own false popes and leaders and even declared themselves to have a direct line of communication with God without need of a messenger from God or a ruler appointed by him. They said, enough for us is the fact that Jesus was crucified for our sins. But Jesus did not come to die. But rather he came to live and to rule. But the people are the ones who betrayed him. If he did not come to rule, then why do the Christians wait for him to come back again and return? The Muslims claimed the Qur'an was enough, and they rejected the divinely appointed successors of Muhammad sallallahu They murdered his family, and claimed prayer and fasting would have them saved. They claimed to have no need of an intercessor between them and God, thus being upon the same religion of Iblis, lanatullah What prayer and what fasting and what Qur'an remains after the spilling of the blood of the grandson of the Nabi? What remains of Islam after the head of the one who the Prophet said, al Hussein is from me and I am from al Hussein, is lodged on a spear? What remains of the Qur'an after the body of the one whom the Prophet said, God loves whoever loves al Hussein, is trampled on in the deserts of Karbala? By Allah you have been deceived by your treacherous scholars and false preachers and imams. I, my brothers and sisters, was sent to invite you to the true religion of God and to true salvation. Salvation not through the observation of laws, for God needs not our prayers nor deeds. Nor do I invite you to salvation through belief in Jesus' crucifixion or in al Hussein's death. I invite you to salvation through pledging allegiance to the Messenger of God and His choice in every day and age. Salvation through electing to support God's nominee for rulership. That way, God may rule on earth as He does in heaven. Justice is established on earth as it is in heaven, and heaven may be enjoyed on earth as it is in heaven. Come to the remnants of God. Come. Come to success and equality, to peace and prosperity. Is there anyone who will help me? The
Those were the words of Al Hussein, son of Ali, but no one came. Today I am sent to utter the same words. Is there anyone who will help me? Whoever dies and doesn't know the Imam of this time dies the death of ignorance. You have no obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that you pledge allegiance and obey a man appointed by him. Allegiance is to Allah. And the narrations from Muhammad and the family of Muhammad all state that the banner of the Mahdi is written in it, allegiance is to Allah. And I am the carrier of that banner. As a messenger to you from Imam al-Mahdi, and as the riser of the family of Muhammad, Abu Sadiq, Abdullah Hashim. I'm the one who came to you claiming the will of Rasulullah. I'm the one who came to you carrying the weapon of Rasulullah, his divine knowledge. And I am more knowledgeable in the Torah than the people of the Torah, and more knowledgeable in regards to the Gospels than the people of the Gospels, and more knowledgeable in the Quran than the people of the Quran. I'm the one who came to you during a time where the trustworthy is belied and the liar is believed. I'm the one who came to you during a time where women resemble men and men resemble women. I'm the one who came to you during a time where the mosques would be adorned but empty of guidance. I'm the one who came to you during a time where nothing remains from the Quran except for its writing and nothing remains from Islam except for its name. I'm the one who came to you during a time where Muslims are called Muslims, and yet they're the furthest thing from it. I'm the one who came to you during a time where the Muslims fast during other than the month of Ramadan and break fast in Ramadan. I'm the one who came to you in a time of wars and rumors of wars. I'm the one who came to you during a time where the scholars of Islam are traitors and liars. I'm the one who came to you during a time where the leaders of the people are the worst of them. I'm the one who came to you during a time where the Bedouin nomads compete in the construction of tall buildings. I'm the one who came to you during a time of frequent earthquakes, hurricanes, and natural disasters. I am the one who came to you during a time where women will appear naked despite their being dressed. I'm the one who came to you during a time where nations call each other to destroy Islam. I am the one who came to you during the time where a year is like a month and a month is like a week and a week is like a day and a day is like an hour. I am the one who came to you during the time where people fornicate like animals on the roads. I am the one who came to you after the appearance of the promised Yamani, Ahmad al-Hassan alayhi salam. I am the one who came to you during the rule of the Sufyani, King Abdullah of Jordan. I'm the one who came to you displaying dozens of miracles that hundreds of people testified to. I'm the one who came to you and interpreted your dreams like Joseph. I'm the one who made the blind see like Jesus. I'm the one who made the moon disappear like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. All by the power of God alone and by his permission without whom no one can do a thing. I am the one whom God has guided hundreds of people to me through true dreams and visions that they had. I am the one whom God has guided hundreds of people to me who asked God sincerely through istikhara. I am the one who comes to you calling you to the supremacy of Allah. Is there anyone who will help me? <laughs> Ever since the time of Adam and until this very day, those who have followed the, the divinely chosen leaders have been persecuted. Satan declared a war against Adam and his children, promising to attack them in every way that he can. The disbelievers mocking Noah, Nimrod throwing Abraham into the fire, Pharaoh and his army chasing down Moses and his people, the Pharisees and rabbis handing in Jesus to the Romans in order to crucify him and Muhammad's family, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, 
being massacred and killed. And in this day and age, as I have called towards true monotheism, which is belief in the divinely appointed king of every day and age, and as I call towards a new covenant with God, me and my people have faced persecution, oppression, and everything else that every divine messenger and his people have faced. In Iran, 15 members of our faith, including minors, were arrested and tortured and subject to extremely harsh and cruel conditions. And attempts were made to force out of them false confessions against myself and the faith. Their only crime was that they believed in the will of the Prophet Muhammad Some of them were bailed out and have now escaped the country fleeing as refugees, while others still remain entrapped in the satanic Republic of Iran. Human rights organizations such as Human Rights Without Frontiers and Amnesty International have written about the case. In Algeria, three members of our faith were arrested and sentenced to one year in prison, which they served six months, while the other 15 were sentenced to six months in prison and served them under house arrest. They have since had the sentences overturned after the involvement of human rights organizations. They have also fled Algeria and are traveling through other countries as refugees. In Egypt, we have had several members of our faith arrested in the middle of the night and detained by national security, while others imprisoned and still remain in prison until this day. The remaining believers in Egypt fled the country seeking a safe haven. In Iraq, many members of the faith have been arrested and threatened by the Shia militia groups. After the release of my book, The Goal of the Wise, raids were conducted against the homes and offices of individuals claiming ties to Ahmed al-Hassan, min salam. Believers in the supremacy of Allah have been arrested and sentenced to prison in Malaysia and still face danger until this very day. Members of the faith in Morocco, Thailand, Jordan, Azerbaijan, and Turkey all face the same dangers in their countries. Never were an oppressed people given the rights except by demanding it, nor did they get their freedom unless they fought for it. Never were the people of God recognized until they sacrificed for it. And for that reason, my beloved brothers and sisters, in protest of the way our people have been treated and in order that we demand our right to peacefully exist and worship our God, the one true God of Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad I ask that you organize yourselves and prepare to march openly on your streets, declaring your faith publicly and proudly, no matter what the cost is, my brothers and sisters. No matter what the cost is. March forward and demand freedom for your brothers and sisters and for yourselves. March forward and let the world know your faith. We have thousands of followers from all over the world. We exist in the U.S. and the U.K. We exist in France, Germany, Spain, Sweden, and all over the EU. We exist in Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, India, Pakistan, and all over Asia. We exist in Australia, and we exist in Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Jordan, Al-Hijaz, Libya, Syria, the UAE, Qatar, and all over the Middle East and North Africa. We exist in almost every country around the world. The so-called world leaders have all agreed that freedom of religion is a basic human right and no one can be persecuted based on their beliefs alone. So let us be recognized worldwide and let us be free. Today is the day of our emergence as a people. Is there anyone who will help me? The